up to the mountains? Does my strength come from the mountains? No. My strength comes from God, who made heaven and earth and the mountains.
Family Church, great to connect with you today. I hope this time of watching this streaming of our church service finds you in the love of God and keeping yourself in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this morning uh, I want to speak to you about pursuing peace. I think peace is something that everybody desires in life, and yet peace is so, sometimes so hard to find. We can see that there's not much peace around, that you have nation against nation, and you have political upheaval, you have all kinds of upheaval in life. And it just seems like even though we're so far advanced with all our technology, like me being able to communicate with you through the technology and the media we have today, it just seems like we've never been able to find the peace this world is looking for because I think that what is happening is they're trying to look for it in the wrong place. And I believe that you can find peace in God. Let me read a scripture to you this morning. It says this in Isaiah 9, 6. It says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. These will be the royal titles, Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. You know, one of God's redemptive names is Jehovah Shalom, which means peace, the God of peace. And the characteristic of God is that God is a God of peace. And so I believe today the only place that you and I can find real peace is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. In John chapter 14, 27, Jesus said this, Peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you, not as this world gives, I give unto you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every situation and give you courage and strength in every challenge. Notice here it talks about Jesus saying, I give you my perfect peace. I love that word perfect peace and, and I believe that we can live in perfect peace in our lives. What would we have to do, you and I, to live in perfect peace? Well, I believe living in perfect peace means that we need to live in harmony. Make harmony. You know, harmony actually uh, speaks about agreement uh, or being in tune. It actually comes, harmony comes from the music world where the instruments they play are harmonized with each other. And you know, if you went into an orchestra, you know, you'd have all these musicians, just to give you this example, all these musicians that, that play all these wonderful instruments and they make beautiful melody together when they harmonize with those instruments. But at the same time, you know, if you and I went to any one of those musicians and we said to them, you know, what, what instruments do you think is the most important in this orchestra? You know, you'll find the violinist say, well, I believe the violin is more important. Then you'll have the sax player say, no, the sax is more important. Or you might have the trombone player say, no, the trombone is more important. Or the percussion people saying, the percussion is more important. And so they will disagree in what they believe is the most important instrument in that orchestra but yet when they play that music they come into harmony with each other and you know that is what we should be like in life to have this perfect peace Jesus talks about we need to go and live in harmony with one another even if we disagree because we know this that in life we will not always agree on everything but you know one thing we can learn in life is this, is that we can agree to be disagreeable and not allow our disagreements to cause disruptions in any way, but just to go on and understand we don't always see life in the same way. And so if we can get to that place in life and understand that not everything agrees in life, but yet we can still harmonize with one another. We can still walk in that peace, in that harmony that we can have in life. So important for us 
to do that today. And so the other thing that we need to understand for us to live in perfect peace is that we need to hold on to peace. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes if you're not careful, you'll allow peace to go. So you've got to hold on to your peace in life. And so you'll find that to hold on to peace in your life is that there are many times that you will have to suppress your thoughts and stop yourself from saying things that uh, you, you want to say. One of the greatest lessons I learned, Laurel and myself in life was this, is that, uh, you know, every couple, every married couple will at some time or another get to a place where they have arguments or disagreements in life. And one of the things that we've learned in our life, and it was such a wonderful lesson for us to learn, was this, is that keep quiet for the sake of peace. Sometimes don't always speak your mind. You know, people feel sometimes I'm going to speak my mind and I'm going to say what I want to. You know, speaking your mind does not always bring forth the peace that you need in your life. So just learn sometimes just to keep your mouth closed. I know that's a hard thing for some people to do because, you know, some people think they always want the last say. If I don't get the last say, then it means I never won this battle. And it's amazing how people feel like if they get the last word in, then they've won this battle. Well, let me say this to you. There's no victory in getting the last word in when it comes in, in that way of making peace with one another, which we should do in life. That is one of the greatest things I've learned in my life, is this is that don't always say what you think. Just keep quiet. You know, he has a beautiful scripture that can help you if you pray it over your life. From Psalm 141.3, it says, Help me, Lord, to keep my mouth shut and my lips sealed. Sometimes we need God just to help us keep our mouths shut so that we can have this perfect peace, that we can create this, inner, this atmosphere of peace around us in our lives, which is so very important for us to do that in life. Another thing that we'll have to do if we want to have peace around in our lives is this, is we need to avoid quarrels and arguments and things that, that go on. Uh, you know, sometimes it's so easy to just get caught up in an argument and, and uh, things happen around you. And, and, you know, we all know this, that arguments and arguing and quarrels and stuff like that, it never leaves a good feeling on us in our lives. Uh, and so we need to avoid those things and do it. And, you know, especially to say this to you, at the time that you and I are living in right now with these uh, lockdown restrictions and that, all that. And, you know, we, we all have different circumstances. Maybe you have a large family and you might not be staying in a, a very spacious area. And, you know, it becomes a very challenging thing to you where you become very restrictive and you people around you and people are doing different things and it doesn't take long where you feel people start getting on your nerves. And, you know, when people start getting on your nerves and you allow that to happen to you, then you start getting agitated and, you know, you start losing your temper. And then what happens is you just start saying things and doing things. And when you look again, you've got all these arguments happening and all the things going on around you. You know, it was interesting to me that a couple of days ago, I was watching the TV and they were actually had two psychologists on the TV talking and they were talking about what kind of effect that this lockdown would have on families. And, you know, they said there are two effects that they believe would have, uh, the lockdown would have on the families. And that was this is that the one would be that there would be an increase in the divorce rate or there would be increase of babies. I think we'll rather go for the latter one, the babies, than the divorce. And so uh, that was interesting for them to say that. In, and in actual fact, uh, Laurel shared with me the other day that she was saying that they were already talking about the fact that there seems to be a spike in divorces and that type of thing that's happening. So we, we need to just uh, make sure to have that peace. We must just avoid those arguments and things that happen in our lives. Today, be a peacemaker. You know, to have peace, be a peacemaker in your life. And it's so important. You know, Matthew, listen to this promise of Matthew 5 
and 9, it says, Blessed, spiritually calm, with life-giving joy, in God's favor, are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they will express His character and be called the sons of God. That verse is telling us this is that you and I, there's not another moment where we are not more like God than when we have peace and make peace. God is a God of peace. It's His character. It's His nature. And we show forth that character of God and that trait in our lives when we are the ones that go and make peace. I like what the Message Bible says. It says this, You are blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete and fight. That's when you'll discover who you really are and your place in God's family. And so it's so important for us to, to do that in our lives is just be a peacemaker. Try and diffuse situations in this time that we have because people are on edge. And, and sometimes just a kind word, just saying something, everything's going to be okay, that can bring forth a place of bringing peace into people's lives that, that people need so desperately at this particular time in life. A mature person is always the person that will apologize or say sorry first. Well, you might say, you know, why must I say sorry if I wasn't the one that started it? Why must I say sorry if I'm not to blame? And many times we'll try and justify why we shouldn't make peace. But let me say this to you. Do not sit back and not make peace because it's not your fault or it is your fault. Just show yourself more Christ-like. Be mature and make peace because peace is good for us in our lives. Be the one that will initiate it and make peace in the life. It's so important. Why? Why is that? Because, you know, peace is vital for you and I. It's vital because without peace in our lives, we find ourselves open to contentions and to, to stress and different things in our lives. And, you know, we know this today that medical science has proven that a lot of people's sicknesses and things that come upon them is caused from stress. And so, you know, this is a good promise for us that if we can pursue peace and stay in peace, we can have a good life. Notice what it says here in 1 Peter chapter 3, 10 to 12, out of the Message Bible, it says, summing it up, be agreeable, sympathetic, be loving, compassionate, be humble. That goes for all of us, no exception, no retaliation, no sharp tongue, sarcasm. Instead, bless. That's your job, to bless and be a blessing, and you will get a blessing. Whoever wants to embrace life and see a day filled with good, if you want to see your day filled with good, here's what you need to do. Say nothing evil or hurtful. Snub evil and cultivate good. Run after peace for all your worth. God looks on all this with approval. Listen and responding and do what he asks because he'll turn his back on those who do evil things. So run after peace. That's talking about pursuing peace. Go after peace in every way you can. I like what the psalmist said in Psalm 34 verses 12 and 14. He said this in the Bible. He says this, What man is he that desires life and loveth many days? He that may see good, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good and seek peace and pursue it. You know, having a calm attitude, calmness of peace. They say that it adds days to your life. Pursuing a good life. You know, don't, don't live in that tension thing all the time. Just run off the peace. Do whatever. That tells me that I've got, I got to do what I can to make peace with everything that's around me and the people around me. Another beautiful promise from the Word of God, and as I just read these to you before we close today, is this, is that it says this in Philippians 4, 6 and 7. It says, Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request to God. And the peace of God, listen to this, the peace of God, that peace which assures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands God over your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. 
That peace that comes from Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is ours and we can pursue that peace today and live in that peace. Instead of worrying and being anxious, because everybody is worrying and anxious. Many of us are anxious about jobs, we are anxious about finances, we are anxious about the, the coronavirus. And you know what? It's a human element that we do. There's not any person that can say that they don't get anxious at times in life. But we should not allow it to control our lives. We should tap in to the peace of God. Pray, casting cares, anxieties upon Him, and let that peace of God, let that peace of God grip your heart. Be calm in these particular times we're in here. And let me close off with this and, and share this verse with you out of Colossians 3.15. It says, let the peace, the soul harmony, there's that word harmony again, the soul harmony which comes from Christ, rule, act as an umpire continually in your heart, deciding and settling with finality all the questions that arise in your minds, that which peaceful state to which you, as members of Christ, one body, you have also been called to live, and be thankful and appreciative giving praise to God always. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. That means you can settle yourself in living in this peace that God wants you and I to live in at this particular time. So I'm encouraging you today is, you know, let's go for peace, even in these restrictive times, even when we feel that we, we're feeling agitated and unsure about what's going on. You know, you can still Hold on to your peace and keep the peace in your family. And you know what? If you keep on to peace, when we come out of what we're going through, things are going to be much better. Let me, let me say this. Whatever we're going through is coming to pass. One of the great things you can learn in the Bible, all these things, they come and but they'll pass. They'll pass and then we'll come out in victory and we'll come out the other side. But a lot of it has got to do how we respond in this particular time. So let me encourage you this morning and say, hold on to peace in Jesus' name. Amen. As I finish that with you this morning, this message that I felt I needed to encourage you with this morning, let me just remind you and say, we appreciate uh, your support for the church and the things that you're doing to be so faithful. And, and I just want to say thank you for being so faithful in this particular time by keep on supporting us financially and that as we all still have, uh, like you have things you still got to pay, we as a church have to, commitments that we have to do. So I, I really want to thank you for doing that, for doing that. And here's a scripture in Galatians 6, 7 and 9 says, Don't be deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall also reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not be weary in the well-doing. In due season we shall reap if we faint not. And so I want to encourage you just to keep on sowing in a time like this uh, because it's important that you sow so you can receive the harvest that you need to receive in your time of need. You can find all the details for our banking on the screen right now. Uh, you can do the EFT banking and we appreciate it. We just want to say thank you once again. We, Laura and I love and we appreciate you. And I want you to know we are praying for you every day. We are praying for you that God will strengthen you in this time. You're going to come out of this time victorious. And you know what? We're all going to be better coming out of this because this is teaching us patience. And it says that if we just learn through this patient time, we will mature and we'll start to be perfect uh, and growing. Uh, perfect means mature in God's eyes. So uh, let me pray for you right now uh, as, as we pray. Father, I thank you for every sower that is uh, sowing seeds into the ministry. That I, I thank you that every need they have, Father, whether it's mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, socially, whatever it is, every need is met in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now, Father, for every person uh, that may be listening to this message that has, haven't got peace, can't find peace. I pray for them today. And today, let me ask you this. Have you ever come to the place where you've come to understand and know the Prince of Peace, Jesus? Today, I want to 
just invite you to do that because you know I don't believe we could ever find the right peace we need in this world without Jesus we need to have him in our lives Jesus coming into our hearts living in our lives calling upon the name of the Lord because the Bible says that if you call upon the name of the Lord you will be saved and so if you're listening to this day to this at the time you're listening now and you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior Pray this prayer with me right now as you receive him into your life. Let's pray together. Say, Jesus, I believe today that you are Lord. I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. Today I receive you into my heart to be the Lord of my life. Thank you that you took my sin upon you. And that today I am saved because you said, whosoever believes on the Son of God will be saved. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, if you have prayed that prayer, there's a phone number there that you can phone if you need us to help you in any way that we can. And uh, you can do that and we would love you to do that. And if you need any prayer, you can also contact us through that phone number that will pray for you. God bless you. We love you and we appreciate you. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen.